Stroud from WCG. I'm joined by my colleague Greg Matthews, also at WCG. And we are super honored, especially in this month of Movember. <laughs> yes, that's right, Movember, not November. Uh, to have Doug Ullman, who's the CEO and president of Livestrong. And you've been here for quite a while, since 2001, I believe, Doug. I, I have, and I've got the best job in the world. And uh, it's great to be with both of you, and, and thanks for uh, inviting me on. Yeah, so I, I had the pleasure of meeting you. I think we met via email last year. Also, Movember related. Absolutely. Uh, but this year, and you guys are doing a ton. You're partnered with uh, Movember. We had an event here at uh, your your digs the other night, the uh, yep. Motai affair, which was a lot of fun. And uh, tell us a little bit about that partnership. How's that working? And well, as you know, because you've been so intimately involved in Movember, I mean, it's it's such a great concept uh, to raise awareness and money to change the face of men's health, and we're just honored to be a partner uh, in this. And so, um, as the years have gone by, we've gotten more involved, having more events, trying to get more people in the Austin community engaged, and uh, the numbers are off the charts this year in terms of participants and funds raised. And uh, so, for us, it's just it's a thrill to even be a small part of it. Yeah, and it's nice to have you guys here, and we really feel like there's some pride of us kicking some butt in the digital challenge, which is a bunch of the cities in the U.S. Right. I think last year we had some in Canada as well that are all competing against one another. Yeah, and the guys from Movember, you know, who started this and, and, and who run Movember across the country and around the world are really looking to Austin as sort of this beacon of support, and, and the numbers are showing it. I mean, I can tell you in the last three years, I mean, the number of people I know personally in Austin who are doing it is, is, has skyrocketed. And, and uh, then hopefully everyone can tell by our... Uh, <laughs> yeah, you know, this is not my normal look. Um, and, 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 you know, I've been getting criticized here internally. People have said, oh, you know, that's illegal. And I said, no, 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 this is the trucker. Yeah. You know, and so Absolutely. that's on the site. It's part of the, yeah, it. so uh, I, I don't want to hear any grief from everybody anymore. I'm, I'm, I'm doing my part. Yes, well, we, we've tried to get our uh, colleagues, you know, Brad is our producer, is, is getting involved. <laughs> he needs to do his shave down. But, uh, Greg, you have a story about how you met uh, Doug recently, yeah. right? Yeah, and this is something, I was really excited about doing this interview because I met you in 2010 at the Social Health Conference. Yep, absolutely. And you opened your presentation by talking about your first cancer diagnosis. And one of the things that you said was that you ended up feeling very alone, yep. that you were not easily able to connect with other people who could relate to your experience. Yep. And I was wondering if you could talk a little bit about how uh, Livestrong is tackling that problem for people that are, that sure. are dealing with cancer. You know, it's very true. I mean, cancer is something that no one ever anticipates is going to happen to them, especially not at a young age. Mm -hmm. and, and so I certainly fell into that boat. And uh, and I had great family, great friends, great teammates, colleagues, etc. And, and yet something was missing. And what was missing was the ability to interact with somebody else who's been down this road. And and so a lot of what we do here at Livestrong is based on that experience. It's sort of how do we connect people to the to the resources and to individuals that they need uh, to, to improve their quality of life and their experience as, as they journey through the, the cancer experience. So, um, you know, we do that in a number of ways, but social media is one of the biggest ways we do it. And ironically now, Facebook and Twitter are the two largest referrals to Livestrong of survivors. Wow. So that's where people are coming to because they're, they're wanting a community. They're seeking that engagement. And so, uh, yeah, I mean, I understand what it's like, and, and so much of what we do is driven by that, that understanding and that belief. Fantastic. Yeah. And as you, um, as you use those portals to bring people to Livestrong, to bring them to that set of resources, how do they then connect with one another and how do they connect with the foundation to, to really get that encouragement and support sure. that they need? So we've got a team of navigate, navigators and um, these are people whose only job is to help people navigate their experience, mm -hmm. whether it's the financial issues, the treatment issues, the psychosocial issues. Um, and so they link people up one-on-one. -on -one. Uh, they sort of do the intake, try to identify what the issues are that people are dealing with yeah. and, and make those connections. And uh, we've actually been in talks recently with Facebook about some functionality to improve our ability to do that wow. um, and Facebook's really excited about it um, so th there's some some little tweaks here and there that we think could could facilitate that and speed up that process because with cancer I mean every hour you're on your own and so the faster that we can do uh, implement these services the, the better fantastic yeah so speaking of Twitter yeah you're a bit of a rock star on the Twitter. I don't know <laughs> okay. I've used it for a few years and I, I can hold my own but you are like you have north of a million followers and you're very natural uh, I think you're one of the few CEOs that 
truly gets it, you understand that um, there's a real power to it. So, talk a little bit about you know how did you get on it, and sure. you know what what is your strategy behind using it if you've got one. Well, I, first I got to give credit to my colleague Jeff Manning, who um, came by my cube here one day and said, "Hey, you got to try this thing called Twitter." And at the time, I had never used MySpace. I didn't have a Facebook account. And so I didn't know what Twitter was. And he said, no, I think it's good. I think you should try it. And, uh, and so he, he deserves all the credit. Jeff is a wise man. Yeah, exactly. And, uh, and it, it just sort of grew from there. Um, but one of the things that I realized early on was that it has to be authentic. And it has to be a combination of both personal and professional. So even though my handle is Livestrong CEO, if, if I don't integrate personal stuff and what I'm doing, then, then it comes across as a marketing tool and not a dialogue and not a conversation. And so um, it's been phenomenal. I, I never dreamed I'd be on it. I never dreamed I'd be using it as much as I am. Uh, but for our organization and for many other nonprofits, it's a free way to connect with people who self-select to be a part of that network. And so it's a targeted audience and, and it's been just awesome beyond beyond my expectations so one follow up to that there's a guy that's involved in this organization i think his name is lance armstrong yeah also on twitter yeah also good at it do you guys have any friendly competition well or? so so jeff got me on twitter yeah and literally two days after i was at lance's house for a meeting and he says what are you doing and i said well I'm, I'm, I'm using twitter and immediately he's like what is that i want that you know and so uh so then he got signed up and uh funny story we were we were in australia adelaide australia in January of 2009, I'll never forget the day because it was the inauguration of Barack Obama. And we got up early to watch it live, to watch his speech. We're sitting there in Adelaide, and he's looking at his follower account. And Lance says, you know, I got 25,000 followers in January of 2009. And he says, do you think by the time July rolls around in the tour France, do you think I can have 100,000? And so we thought that was like a big goal. And of course, by the time July rolled around, he had over a million followers, and it just sort of took off from there. But, uh, wow. but there's a little bit of com competitive juices flow flowing in this organization. <laughs> I can imagine. And I'm curious, you mentioned the, the navigators. Yeah. Do your navigators use Twitter as well? Is that something that people have individual accounts and is part of their outreach, or is that? So they, they do for promoting the services. Mm -hmm. um, I don't think they use it as much for sort of the interactive. Sure programming um, uh, that they do one-on-one -on -one with people. They use Makes Facebook sense. a lot. Uh, but again, the issue with Facebook is making sure it's a secure one-on-one -on -one so that right. sensitive information isn't shared. Um, but uh, but in terms of driving people to the resources that we offer, absolutely. Um, I think right now, I would venture to say 90% of our team here are on Twitter. Um, it's not mandated and people can use it personally or professionally however they want. Uh, but it's been awesome to have multiple voices within an organization. I mean, for example, our CFO, who had never dreamed of being on Twitter, mm -hmm. every day now he puts up a Livestrong fact of the day. And it could be how much money we're spending on a program or how many people we're helping or, you know, and so to see him get interested and get excited about it, yeah. it gives us just another opportunity to communicate with, with people who have been so generous to make all of our programs possible. So it's been, it's been awesome. The thing that I, that I find really cool about that is that there are so many organizations that really try to funnel communications right. to a particular right. Person or right. a particular organization, and right. what you've done is really open it up so that all of your employees can be ambassadors. They totally. clearly are here because they care. Totally. Um, and I think that's totally. a, a fantastic model. Um, it's been great. It's it's given our, our team members that platform, but beyond that, it's given people with cancer a platform. People who survive cancer and their family members, they want to tell their story. Yeah. And so it's given them a free way to sort of have their own following and sort of say, here's what I've been through. And and that community that's built is incredibly powerful yeah incredibly Fantastic. powerful so so back to that community you touched touched on facebook earlier yeah the older generation they are starting to adopt facebook sure um, are you starting to see them talk more about their experiences? Are they joining Absolutely. groups? And are you guys participating in any public groups on Facebook to help sort of rally the church? Yeah, so we, we, we organize a bunch of communities on Facebook now, um, both by region and then some by issue. So if people are dealing with lymphedema or if they're dealing with financial issues, we'll have different chats and different dialogues that are going. Um, we are seeing a much older demographic join into those uh, discussions um, because a couple of years ago primarily it was you know uh, children adult children whose, whose parents were battling cancer and they were the ones online looking for information and support but but we see a, a, a large breadth of diversity in terms of age now and again Facebook for us has, has become this very vibrant community where people again on their own terms and at their own time 
sort of can go on and get the information, as opposed to a support group that meets at 6 p.m. You know that you may or may not be able to make it to. You can sort of go on at 2 a.m. when you're not sleeping and, and get information and interact with people. So it's been pretty cool. That's fantastic. I have this perception that Livestrong is uh, a tremendous connector of yeah. all kinds of cancer resources, yeah. and the association with Movember is one yeah, example. Absolutely. What are some of the other organizations that you partner with, and how does that benefit the people who come to you for a community? Sure. You know, we we, we believe in partnership. Um, and we believe that we are a catalyst and a convener. Um, and we believe we should use the brand that's been built to bring people together. Uh, just this week in Austin, we had 200 organizations that came together for what's called the Livestrong Young Adult Alliance. Mm. And what we realized a couple years ago was in order to solve the problems that young adults with cancer have, we weren't going to be able to do it by ourselves. So we started this alliance. We had 200 groups join, and they get together once a year and try to figure out how best to serve that population. Mm. So it's not about us. Our goal is not to be the biggest. Or, or have the most money is to have the biggest impact. And so we do that with Movember, we do that with the American Cancer Society, whoever's willing to come to the table in an effort to help more people, we're all in. Uh, and, and again, our goal is not to become this behemoth organization, it's to help as many people as possible. Well, that's great. We've been talking with Doug Ullman, who's the CEO and president of Livestrong Foundation. Uh, we've talked social media, we've talked Movember, we talked all sorts of cool things. <laughs> Uh, we hope you'll join us for episode four where we come back and talk a little bit more uh, of a lighter topic, barbecue and music with Doug. So stay tuned. <laughs>